Welcome back, Bartonella buddies. My name is Jake, like the boy's name. My mom thought she was clever. Today, let's answer a burning question in the Bartonellosis patient community. Why does each Bartonellosis patient have such different symptoms? The answer to this question is, each Bartonellosis patient has such different symptoms because the symptoms are heavily dependent on the host response. You, the person with Bartonellosis, are hosting a party of very rude Bartonella guests. Depending on a whole range of factors, each patient's body is going to respond to these guests in a different way. Some people swiftly and effectively kick the guests out like a bouncer at the club. Ask me if that's ever happened to me while other people's immune systems freak out and ineffectively scream and flip tables on their rude guests. Real Housewives of New Jersey, anyone? To understand why disease presentations in Bartonellosis are so dependent on the host, we have to understand the difference between frontal pathogens and stealth pathogens. And you can think of these terms as two different strategies during an attack. Frontal pathogens are fast growing, highly contagious, and sometimes lethal. And an example of a frontal pathogen is the bacterium that causes cholera. Not to be confused with cholera the dish, and yes, there is a dish called cholera, and it looks like this. It's a Swiss savory dish with potatoes, vegetables, and fruit baked with cheese in a pastry. During an epidemic of cholera in 1836, people in the region improvised a dish using whatever food they had on hand. After the epidemic subsided, the cholera dish continued to present day. I can't think of cholera without thinking of diarrhea. Yum. Okay, so back to cholera the pathogen. Cholera is a frontal pathogen because it causes symptoms rapidly. The diarrhea that cholera causes enables the cholera to spread to a new host through the diarrhea. You can think of them as party hoppers. On the flip side, stealth pathogens are slow growing, opportunistic, and or latent. Bartonella manipulates the host's immune system to establish chronic infection. These are the guests that stay for after dinner drinks, get rowdy, refuse to leave, and then fall asleep on your couch. Okay, don't worry, I'm done with the party host metaphor. <laughs> Dr. Robert Moziani in his presentation on Bartonellosis has a great slide that I'm going to steal and put in here that further explains this concept. If you haven't watched this webinar already, it's a must, and I'll put a link to it in the video description below. If you look at this slide, the interplay between the pathogen, host, and the environment influences disease presentation. On the left-hand side, microbes with high pathogenicity, or in other words, frontal pathogens, often have similar symptoms. On the right-hand side, chronic infections often have different disease presentations because the symptoms are more dependent on the host. Now, of course, these are generalizations and there are exceptions to every rule. So, in sum, the reason why patients have such different symptoms is because Bartonella is a stealth pathogen that causes chronic infection. And in chronic infections, the symptoms are very much determined by the host immune response. But to throw a wrench in this clean and simple understanding, I think one could argue that Bartonella is both a frontal and a stealth pathogen. Bartonella can cause both acute and chronic illness. The most well-known acute presentation, or at least the most well-known acute presentation in the United States is cat scratch disease, which presents with swollen lymph nodes, fever, and a bumper blister at the site of infection. So in this acute presentation, many patients present with these three symptoms. On the other hand, Bartonella is a stealth pathogen because it can go inside red blood cells to evade the host's immune system, and it can manipulate the host's immune system to establish chronic infection. The host's response to an infection is influenced by many factors, both understood and not understood by doctors and scientists. Some things that may influence the host's response include genetics slash epigenetics, the immune system, general health and lifestyle factors like age, comorbidity, nutrition, stress, the host's environment, and perhaps even biological sex. Some of you might be thinking to yourself, well, I've been healthy all my life. I eat right, I exercise, so how did I still get sick? Those are really good questions, and I would say overall that medical science knows relatively little about the host response. Let's use me as an example. The worst part of my Bartonellosis is my mass activation syndrome. Although, to be fair, before the MCAS came on full force, I already couldn't stand for more than 15 minutes a day due to excruciating pain in my feet. So that was already bad, but then the MCAS made it even worse. I have now reacted to every medication, supplement, herb I've thrown down my throat, now well over 60 of them, maybe even 70 or 80. I need to do a recount except for Benadryl, Valium, and Pepsid. I even react to empty veggie capsules with burning nerve pain all over my body. 
To give you a little more medical history, when I was a baby, I projectile vomited cow's milk formula. And I've always been more allergic than your average person and suffered from various food intolerances like chicken giving me diarrhea. But I wouldn't have necessarily characterized all of that as mast cell activation. Given my history, did I have a predisposition, perhaps a genetic predisposition, to developing mast cell activation syndrome in the context of a Bartonella infection? I feel like that argument can be compellingly made. So now let's take the example of someone who is immunosuppressed due to HIV. They are much more prone to developing what is called bacillary angiomatosis. What? Bacillary angiomatosis? Huh? Bacillary angiomatosis involves lesions on the skin and organs. The word bacillary refers to the rod shape of the Bartonella bacteria, and the word angioma refers to the formation of new blood vessels. In bacillary angiomatosis, the Bartonella induces new blood vessel growth, basically so it can have a bigger house party. Like a rager! Damn, I lied. I went back to the metaphor. So in my case, my symptoms are largely due to an overactive immune response, while in the case of someone who is immunosuppressed because of HIV, the bacillary angiomatosis is caused by the microbe itself. Then there's the question, to what extent is the host response causing the illness or is the microbe causing the illness? To understand the answer to this question, we must first understand that infection doesn't always equal disease. We know that there are asymptomatic carriers of Bartonella. Why? Because location, 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 AKA it's the host, which points to how important one's immune response is in disease manifestation. In my case, the immune dysregulation is so severe that it is preventing me from treating the infection and eating, treating and eating. At this point in time, I would say that my host response accounts for much, if not most, of my symptoms. Will medical science ever be able to tell me what percentage of my symptoms are due to my immune response versus the microbe itself? I'm not even sure that's a question that medical science can answer. I might even argue that the distinction between the microbe causing the illness versus the immune response causing the illness is quite blurry of a distinction and there's a lot of overlap and interplay. I think COVID is a perfect and timely example of that interplay between the pathogen and the host. We know that there are asymptomatic carriers. We know that some people develop mild to moderate disease. We know that some people develop severe disease. And we know that some people ultimately succumb to the disease. Some people don't develop any respiratory symptoms at all and only develop GI symptoms. My mouth is so dry. <laughs> all better. There are a lot of unknowns as to why there are such different disease presentations, but we know that older people and those with pre-existing conditions are more likely to develop severe disease. We also know that those who ultimately succumb to COVID suffer from a cytokine storm, which is basically an immune response so severe that it kills you. COVID is also a perfect example of frontal and stealth qualities in a pathogen. COVID causes an acute illness where most people develop respiratory symptoms, but we are also... <coughs> <coughs> I don't have COVID. Because you don't go anywhere. No, I don't. I go to the beauty station, to the bed, and the bathroom. Bartonella Babe goes to the beauty station, the bed, and the bathroom. And the doctor's office. <laughs> <laughs> COVID causes an acute illness where most people develop respiratory symptoms. But we are also learning, at least anecdotally, that some people are developing what is being called long COVID. These people have persistent symptoms of fatigue, brain fog, diarrhea, nerve pain, and dozens of other symptoms that will sound familiar to many of us. Is this because the virus can persist in the body or is it because of an aberrant immune response that remains after the infection is cleared? Or is it both, meaning that some people do still have the infection within the body while other people are stuck in an inflammatory process? Another reason for why some people get sick from Bartonella and others do not is due to pathogenicity of strains. In other words, some people have ruder and more belligerent guests than other people. I'm sorry, but actually not. Oops, I did it again.
From lab studies, we know that some strains of Bartonella hensley are more pathogenic than other strains. And that's a whole nother topic and video, so I won't go in depth here. And finally, before you go, if you haven't stopped watching already, I want to share with you this super interesting article that was sent to me by Dr. Amanda Elam. Oh, and if you haven't watched my interview with her, you've made a big oversight, and I'll put a link to that in the top right corner of your screen and in the video description box down below. So in sum, the authors argue that we should ditch the term pathogen altogether because disease is as much about the host as it is the infectious agent. You gotta read it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and thank you if you do. And, I want to thank you. and if you subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you get a notification every single time I post. Oh, yes, you're already falling asleep. Piper, what kind of party guest are you? I'm like the old uncle that falls asleep at the table before the meal even comes. Bye, Bartonella buddies! Oh, babe, babe, oops, you think I'm in love, that I'm set from above.